If there's one skill to develop, as well as any other, this is probably one of the major ones, communication. And by the way, I've got a theme for this seminar for these two days. The evening seminar, the theme was the major key to your better future is you. I've changed it just a little to read. The magic key to your better future is you. There's magic in a smile. There's magic in a handshake. There's magic in human contact. There's magic in believing. In fact, that's a good book if you haven't got it. Add it to your library. The Magic of Believing by Bristol. Good book. Anyway, hopefully these two days we'll talk a little bit more and maybe discover some more of the magic of human contact, human ability, human potential. And communication is one of those major, major skills to develop. See if you can't find the magic within you that can reach other people. How to affect other people with words. Major challenge. To get your ideas across, to get people to understand what you're trying to say. Get them to understand how you feel. And at first, words are a bit clumsy when it comes to trying to express an emotion or an idea or a feeling. But if you'll practice it, and especially if you know the components of good communication, it'll really start to help. I heard the story about the preacher in the back country down in the southern part of the United States was taking over this little country church for the first time, and he was up preaching his first sermon. And he said, congregation, first of all, this church has got to crawl. And in order for this church to crawl, everybody's got to show up and do their Christian duty. And if everybody will show up and do their Christian duty, this church can begin to crawl. And the congregation understood what the preacher said, and they all responded, let it crawl, preacher, let it crawl. He said, next, this church has got to get up and walk. In order for this church to walk, everybody has got to tell their Christian story and try to win somebody else. And if everybody will tell their story, try to win someone else, this church can begin to walk. And the congregation understood what the preacher said, and they all responded, let it walk, preacher, let it walk. He said, next, this church has got to run. And in order for this church to run, everybody has got to divide up, serve on the committees, and do the work of the church. And if everybody will divide up, serve on the committees, do the work of the church, this church can begin to run. And they all understood what the preacher said, and they responded, let it run, preacher, let it run. He said, finally, this church has got to fly. And in order for this church to fly, everybody has got to reach down deep and give some of their cash. And if everybody will reach deep and give a portion of their cash, this church can begin to fly. And they all understood what the preacher said, and they responded, let it walk, preacher, let it walk. <laughs> OK, how to make it clear. First of all, we communicate for two primary reasons. And here they are. Number one, we communicate just to get along. You can't even function in the barest minimums without some kind of communication. If you want the bread, you have to learn to ask for it, the barest of communication. So that's number one. Here's number two. We communicate to accomplish some purpose, a specific purpose. Now, communication starts from somewhere. And for you, communication starts with you. Good phrase to remember. Your world begins with you. This is not to be self-centered, but your world is around you, your own consciousness and your own awareness. And so for things to work well, first of all, it's got to work well with you. Part of my training in getting me turned around, headed in the right direction, when I first met Mr. Schoff, the man who helped to formulate the ideas that helped to change my business and social and personal life, was for me to understand that the biggest changes I was, that was going to have to be made in my future were going to have to be made personal. 
I kept hoping the weather would change and the government would change and prices would change and my neighbors would change and the people would change and my friends would change and that the economy would change and that the country's direction would change. I kept waiting for change all around and then he's the one who taught me. What changes your world is not wishing for change. What changes your world is changing. You've got to change. And sure enough, as a man thinketh, a book by James Allen, there's a little phrase in there that says, humans are rather strange. We curse the effect and nourish the cause. We want it to change, but we don't want to change. Interesting. The guy puts sand in his shoes and he can hardly walk. And you say, well, how can you walk with that sand in your shoes? The guy says, I can hardly walk. You say, well, why do you do that? I said, I don't know. I've just been doing it for years. Incredible. The guy puts tax in his bed and he can hardly sleep. You say, well, how can you sleep with all those tax in your bed? The guy says, I can hardly sleep. You say, well, why would you do that? He said, I don't know. It's been in the family for years. I mean, we just do things like that. Interesting. Why? We would wish for it to change, hoping it will change, but resisting change. Now, once you understand that all of it starts with you, now you can start making some incredible progress. And good communication with you, for you, that happens to you, the great majority of it starts with you. Now, here's a good phrase to remember. You cannot speak that which you do not know. First of all, you've got to have it before you can speak it, before you can share it. So good communication starts with an awareness that, first of all, to get a good communication going with anybody, it's got to start with some substance on your part. Now, how to consciously grow and build the substance from where communication comes from, that is the key. It's like, first of all, making deposits. You can't withdraw anything till you put something in. We all need to be consciously aware every day of gathering up the ideas, the inspiration, the feelings that we're going to use for future communication. Future meaning maybe in the next five minutes, but maybe the next five days, five weeks, five months, five years. Consciously aware. It is not that difficult for the years to pass and to not be conscious of what's happening in the way of demands or what's going to come in the way of opportunity for you and just drift along and not be much further ahead a year from now than you are right now, simply because you just let the days pass. But if you have a conscious awareness of what it takes to effectively affect other people, to get your ideas across, to get decisions, to express your feelings and your opinions, once you, once you do that deliberately and consciously and daily and consistently, now that's what starts your own personal development.